Hi Martin Roberts here. So in this little video I wanted to talk a bit about the different strategies that you could adopt when it comes to investing in property. Because a lot of people think it's just about buying a house, doing it up maybe, or renting it out. There's so, so much more than that uh, when it comes to the options, when it comes to investing in property. And that's one of the reasons why I've got my property training courses. If it was all just about going down to the estate agent and buying a house uh, and then doing it up and selling it on, well, you know, we wouldn't have a property training course, would we? Uh, but there's enough to know. And often, because I run these three-day courses, and often people come along on the first day, and it's so funny, at the end of the first day, you can see their brains going, oh my gosh, I never realised there was so much to it. Once you scratch the surface, you realise how much you don't know. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, but, but let's try and just whet your appetite as to some of the options which are out there. And then I'll probably do some specific videos in the coming weeks, uh, focusing in on those particular areas. Uh, in, in, in particular, and of course, as well as that, if you want to do my property training courses, then just check out uh, martinrobertspropertyeducation.com. But first and foremost, uh, one of the basic things you could do when it comes to buying a house uh, in terms of investment strategy, uh, and take a step back, a lot of people just buy a house and somewhere to live. I mean, that's, that's what we all start with, isn't it? Ideally, it's what we all aspire to, ideally. Um, or maybe not. I mean, there are lots of people who are just happy to rent and that's absolutely great if it works for you. But I think, um, you know, a fair proportion of people see owning their own property as, as something to, to try and achieve. And certainly over history, people who have invested in property uh, have certainly reaped the rewards of that. Uh, you know, if you look at, a lot of people look at their parents' generation and, you know, they can often be a little bit cash poor, uh, but they're sitting on some incredible asset of a house that they bought for 6,000 quid back in the 1960s, uh, which is now worth 600,000 quid. Uh, you know, I'm sure you've got uh, lots of examples of those kind of stories. But, um, so buying a house to live in is, is obviously a lot of people's first priority, but you can... You can use property investment to get you the funds you need to buy that house to live in. Because obviously a house that you're living in is is probably not going to be generating you an income. Certainly you, you wouldn't be renting it out unless you're renting it out to yourself, which obviously doesn't make sense. Um, it could be something that a house that you live in for a while and do it while you're there. Uh, and then sell it on. And that is what a lot of people do. And there's certainly a lot of tax advantages uh, for that. If it's your principal residence, uh, things like capital gains tax uh, are obviously um, don't come into play. But um, uh, so, so actually, if you do own a house and a house that you're going to live in, uh, that then uh, there's still ways you can use that as a, as a vehicle to make money. But once you've once you've established yourself with a home, perhaps, or, or, I don't know, you could be renting somewhere and doing this as, as a sideline. But uh, once we've moved on from uh, looking at property as a place to purely live, uh, then there's various strategies for using houses, the housing stock, housing market uh, in general to, to, to make money. Um, the basic diff ways, I suppose, that most people would be aware of is you buy a house at a certain price and you sell it a certain time later uh, for more. Um, and that time period could be quite short. Um, if you source the right house at the right price, and a lot of people say you make your money when you buy a house, not when you sell it. And that sounds crazy, but it's all about the price you pay when you buy it, right? So if you can buy properties, what's called under market value, and that is below the price uh, that the market says they're worth, um, then there's an opportunity to what's called flip those properties on, sell them on straight away for a profit. A lot of people say, how can that be? You know, um, how can you make a quick profit on property? Well, it's all about having the opportunity and spotting the opportunities. I mean, auctions are obviously a classic example. Um, you know, not all auction properties are bargains, but there are bargains at auction. And if you can buy a bargain property at auction, um, and there can be lots of reasons how you get that or why you get that, um, not, you know, not a lot of people in the room, um, you just spotted the opportunity, you were brave enough to do it, um, you know, all sorts of reasons why you could end up buying a property under market value. You could end up spending at, spending at auction, um, say, £100,000 on a property, which 
other properties in the street, which are similar, are selling through estate agents for, say, £120,000. So in that circumstance, you could theoretically just, what's called, as I said before, flip that property on, sell it on for uh, a profit. Um, and there's lots of ways that you can get hold of those properties. And in my courses, we talk about all the different ways of sourcing property. That could be noticing properties that seem unoccupied in your area and putting notes through the door. So if you're interested in selling your property, you could be um, placing adverts in newspapers saying if you're interested in selling your property. There's lots of ways that you can get hold of properties and then either flip those properties on or take an alternative strategy. So the most basic option, I guess, is to buy a house at a discount or at a good price or source a property and then sell it on at a certain amount of time later for a profit without doing anything to it. We did a story on Homes Under the Hammer years ago uh, where a, a guy had bought this flat and he just got it at the auction and it was it was a really good flat. Um, it, it needed nothing doing to it. So when we, and this is a classic, it's one of my, my favourites. Um, when we went back, we said to him, what have you done? And all he had done on this property was replace the toilet seat. So when it came to his budget, it was £19.99, pence, which is what he's paid for his toilet seat. But he bought the property, this flat at auction, and he sold it on and he made 20 or 30 grand. Oh, that's a good trick if we can do it, right? Now, that doesn't necessarily happen all the time, but those deals are out there. What is probably a, a more standard strategy, I guess, is to buy that property and then invest some time and money and effort doing it up. So that is um, looking at what would make that property more appealing for the average purchaser. And don't underestimate the lack of desire <laughs> that a lot of people have on doing anything to do with doing a property up. So they they wouldn't, they just want to walk into a show home. So you could just put a coat of paint on a property, you could tart at the bathroom, maybe sort the kitchen out, tidy it up outside, but make it look a lot more appealing. So there's an opportunity at the second level, I suppose, of just buying a property and doing a minimal amount of work on it to to get it into a state where it is more appealing and then selling it on. The next layer, I guess, of the flip strategy uh, is to buy a house, a bungalow, a flat, whatever it might be, and then renovate it completely. So you look for something which is particularly derelict or in a particularly bad state. And then you're looking at a full refurbishment. So as the first project might have a budget of five grand for tarting up. The second layer will have a budget of 20 to 30 grand for doing things like replacing a kitchen, replacing a bathroom, um, you know, full rewire, new central heating system. So you're taking a property and bringing it back up to standard, up, up to scratch. Um, your investment on that is going to be more, but hopefully the profit that you make will be considerably more as well. And it's really important in those circumstances that you do your sums and work out your budgets and keep very strictly to those budgets. Otherwise, the whole concept is going to go completely pot. Um, so if you buy a house for 100 grand and you spend 50,000 pounds doing it up only to discover it's only worth 130,000 pounds, even fully done up, then you've really messed up, which is where knowing your numbers becomes really important. So you need to be checking out the website, checking out the local estate agents to find out what similar properties will sell for and only, only put in an amount of money up to and ideally a lot below what's called the ceiling price for properties in the area. And the ceiling price is basically at the price at which properties uh, in that area will only ever be sold for. So a three bedroom terrace uh, will only ever sell for 150 grand in that street, even if uh, it's got gold taps and you know helicopter landing pad on the roof. So it's really important that you stick to those numbers and, and work that out. So that could be uh, another strategy. And well, the nice thing about that one is um, people often struggle, and I'm going to do a whole video about first timers and how to help them, but people often, often struggle 
getting on the ladder and they say, how can I get on that property ladder? Uh, and I really advise them and, 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 and really try to, you know, encourage them to use that thing, which, which is the first time you've probably got more of than anything else. And that is time. And you can put your time into a property, doing it up um, and adding value to it and just building up a little, pro basically a, what's called equity, as in uh, the, the, the value of the property and, and what you actually owe on it or how much you paid for it, that gap there, trying to make that as big as you possibly can. You can add value, add equity, make money in the long term by by putting your own efforts into, into that. So, um, so, so it's a really good starting point for you if you're building your way and working your way up the property ladder. So that's the third uh, 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 category, if you like, of, of doing up a place or buying a place that's in a right old state and then doing it up and then selling it on. So more generally, that is the buy a house, do it up, sell it on strategy, a flip strategy. The other strategy which you might want to consider is a buy and hold or a buy to let, buy to rent, buy to, to rent out to other people. So the view there will be that you will buy a property and you will do it up more often than not, or you could buy something that's already been done up, but then, then there's not necessarily much, much opportunity to add value. You buy a property and you keep it and you rent it out. And during the time it's rented out, the most important thing is the amount of money you're getting in from rent is covering and making you a profit from all your costs associated with that property. So um, if you're paying a rent on that property, you have to take that off the rent in terms of working out yeah, your overall uh, yield, as it's called. You have to take off any maintenance on that property if you're responsible for it. You have to take off any, any, anything else that's associated with an outgoing on that property. And you obviously want to make sure that the gap in between uh, the rent you're getting in and the expenses you have is as big as, as possible. So that is your profit. Uh, and, and realistically, you know, if you buy the right house in the right area, the yields, which is the um, a percentage of the amount you've got invested and the amount you're getting back. Um, so say, for instance, you've got £100,000 invested and you get £10,000 back. That's a 10 percent yield. Um, realistically if you buy the right property in the right parts of the country you can be looking you know at 10 12 even 15 percent yield i mean we've we've had people on homes under the hammer getting a 20 percent yield on their properties just think about that you own a house 20 percent yield that means in five years your investment is paid back and you've still got the asset that's pretty cool right so there is the option of buy to let and if it comes to buy to let, it's really important. A whole different set of criteria come into play. If you're renting out, who are you going to be renting to? Ask yourself some basic questions. You know, what is my target market? Am I renting out to families? So are there good schools nearby? Am I renting out to students? So is, there, is this a popular student area? You know, uh, am I looking to rent out to commuters? Is it on a bus route? Easy access to a tube station or, or a train station? Uh, all these things come into play. I mean, they come into play if you're buying to flip as well, popular areas, but if you're renting out, even more so. There are lots of rules and regulations when it comes to renting property. And certainly if you're doing up a property with a view to renting it out, there's other things which you need to consider. Things like having the electrics uh, certified, the gas certified every year, uh, making sure the property is safe in every aspect uh, of that property so that a renter uh, has a safe and a pleasant place uh, to, to actually live in. But in terms of buying the property for buy to let, the same rules apply. You could buy somewhere uh, that's um, ready to go. Uh, you could buy somewhere that needs a little bit of work or you could buy somewhere that needs a full refurbishment. And I guess if you are looking at a full refurbishment, then you can refurbish that property uh, with the view of maximising the amount of rent you're going to get. Now, I'll touch briefly on it, um, but I'm going to do a whole uh, uh, video about it. Uh, and there are... Uh, there is uh, an advanced training course with Asset Academy, which is all about HMOs. That's Houses of Multiple Occupation. As I said, I won't go into super detail about it now, but the basic concept is that you have a property 
And instead of renting it out to one family or one person, you rent it out to multiple uh, family, multiple people. Um, so one house could be split up into, say, five or six uh, self-contained uh, apartments, rooms. They're not flats because they're not individual. They don't have their own doors and all that. Kind of well, they have their own entrance doors into the doors of the bedrooms and things. But but it's not like it's an actual self-designated flat. It's a house of multiple occupations. So often you'll have shared facilities such as a shared kitchen. Um, most people these days wouldn't want to be sharing a bathroom. Um, so um, if you're looking to do up a house, and again, um, with that with that in mind, if, you've, if you're if you going for a property that does need a full refurbishment, you can be thinking about things like putting in on suites in all the rooms, in all the bedrooms. Uh, and that will certainly open up your opportunities when it comes uh, to, to, to rental opportunities. Now, there are lots of rules and regulations when it comes to HMOs, which, as I said, why we do a full uh, specialist course and advanced training all about HMOs in my property training seminars and rather my property training courses. Uh, but they certainly are something you might want to consider. So, as I said, I'm going to look at things like HMOs and some of the things I'm going to talk about right now in great detail, but just to open your eyes for the final few minutes uh, about some of the other opportunities when it comes to property. We haven't even touched on the idea of commercial property. How about buying something which is a shop or um, uh, a storage unit um, or, 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 or anything else? I mean, you know, a farmland, I mean, whatever it might be. There are great opportunities for um, commercial investment investment in commercial property, land, uh, and various other bits and pieces. And again, there's a whole course that we do just about commercial properties. You could look at social housing, um, building houses which are very much geared to providing good quality social housing. And again, lots of things to consider there, but you could uh, be looking at doing up and renting out properties to a housing association or a local council or even uh, a, a charitable organisation. Uh, and there's lots of things you can do. You can get them involved in the early stages and they can actually finance part uh, of, of what you're doing if you build to their specifications. So again, it, it's a specialist area. I will be talking more about that in a, in a, in a future video. Um, how about lease options? You ever heard of lease options? Uh, it's an amazing concept. A lease option uh, is an opportunity for you to get involved in the property market with very, very, very little upfront money. And it's a way of securing a future property deal. Uh, and uh, it's really complicated, which is why well, there's a whole weekend course all about lease options. And I will go into that in more detail uh, in the future. How about land? Um, you know, as John uh, John Wayne, John Wayne, <laughs> John Wayne, get off your horse and buy some land. What did, I need to talk about it. You, you John Wayne, what's the John Wayne accent? Uh, get off your horse and buy some land. Anyway, it wasn't him anyway. That's a complete sideline. It was Mark Twain, not John Wayne. They sort of sound the same, right? Um, sort of. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, so, so John Wayne. No, not John Wayne. Shut up. Mark Twain famously said, it's by land, and they're not making any of it anymore. And uh, he's absolutely right. So there are opportunities uh, for not necessarily buying um, properties themselves, but land. And then you get into the realms of buying land, which you might be able to build on. Um, so stuff that already has planning permission is less risky, but you could buy land uh, which you hope to get property uh, built on in the future. Um, then you put in a planning application and go through that process. There's lots of things you can do uh, through that. And that is certainly a very profitable option. So I hope I've just given you a kind of insight into a real broad cross section of opportunities there are uh, when it comes to buying property. And when I do my, 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 my basic training courses, you know, when people come along on the first day, you can see they only think about the first two options, which is buying a house and either living it or selling it on. And it really is interesting to see the, the opening of the mind to the fact that there are so many different opportunities when it comes to buying property and, and ways that can fit in with your own criteria, be that the amount of time you've got, be that the amount of finances you've got, uh, be that your experience, uh, you know, or, and your desire to get involved in these kind of things. 
But that is a bit of an overview. As I said, in future videos, check out and look for uh, specialist videos, which I'm going to create on if you're a first time buyer, if you're looking at buying land, if you're looking at commercial property, if you're looking at HMOs, flip strategies, uh, parts of the country you might be considering uh, and, and various other things that I'll be covering in the future. And do bear in mind my property training courses. Uh, you can find out more about those at Martin Roberts Property Education Dot com. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do like it, do subscribe, tell your friends if you've enjoyed it and look out for the next video of Martin Roberts Property Tips. Mm -hmm.